Hey, it's your girl, Nancy Red, and this is season three of Mompreneurs, where every week we celebrate beautiful black entrepreneurs who are simultaneously amazing business moguls and awesome moms. We listen to their life stories and inspiring advice. And I have followed the journey of our next guest for years, years, y'all. Oh my goodness. And each season of her life keeps getting better and better as her brood gets bigger and more grown and so cute. And this is all due to her hard work and determination to make it happen for herself and her gorgeous family. Because there are mommy bloggers and then there are mommy of six bloggers like Courtney and Williams, who is here to share how sharing her life journey as a single mom of one to a blended family of six children and a husband has changed not just her family makeup, but her financial circumstances. Welcome, Courtney. <laughs> hey, guys. So excited. Thank you for having me. Uh, I am so obsessed. I am fangirling here because uh, <laughs> your journey on social media is one for the records, wouldn't you say? Uh, yeah, definitely, for sure. It's been a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, before we get into your mompreneurship, let's talk about who makes you a mom. Tell us about your household for people who aren't yet following you in depth like I am. Yes, so I have a big blended family of eight. We have six little ones ranging from teenagers, 13, our oldest will be 13 in the fall, all the way down to infancy. Our youngest is six months. She'll be uh, seven months soon. And then everything in between toddler, elementary, middle school. <laughs> So um, I had a daughter when I met my husband and my husband had a son when we met. And we since then, we've added four little ones to our crew, making it eight of us. And, and it's so funny because your daughter, and your son, people used to think they were twins. Yeah, it's the craziest thing. Like they literally favor and they're only 10 months apart. So as far as like size and everything, they're pretty like, um the same and when we met they were only toddlers like i think carrie was like two and deuce was like three um and so when we were out and about people literally would ask us are they twins and we're like little do y'all know they aren't even blood related but we just thought that was like the craziest and coolest thing because um outside looking in you would never even be able to tell we were blended and here's the thing, Wait, we're going to get into the mompreneurship in a second, but a lot of this is part of this, because what I love about your story is I, I remember years ago, you shared that he, that he did what everyone tells you, girl, don't listen, don't, don't, don't accept it. What did this man do to get your attention? <laughs> my husband slid in the DMs, <laughs> which is how I met. So I think it's so funny when people are like, how did you and your husband meet? And I always like, we met <laughs> via Instagram. So yes, he slid in the DMs to reach out to me um, because we were living in two totally different states at the time. And thankfully, if for some reason, I entertained it and I responded it because typically I probably would have just like brushed over it, but I entertained it and I responded it. And here we are now, almost 10 years later. And, and what's really great about it is so, so a lot of the running themes in um, this podcast is how do you maintain your romantic life, your personal life, this business and being a mom, right? And interestingly enough, you are a content creator. And you were sharing a lot of your life. So when he slid into your DMs, he knew exactly what he was sliding into. Right, right, right. Well, the thing is, at the time, I wasn't doing it so much like how I am now. Um, but I still was, you know, just kind of posting like your average person, just sharing updates and things like that on social media. Um, so yeah, essentially, he did know that, you know, a few things about me at the time. Yeah. And so why do you think, what do you think, what do you think led to this? Because a lot of people love watching you now. Like we've been watching you for a really long time. We've watched you before the husband, after the husband, before, before the six kids. <laughs> right. Before the, before the fancy house that we watched you build from the ground up, writing your names, writing prayers on the walls. But right. What do you think gravitated him to you just from what you're posting online? Yeah, I would say I think we had a lot of similarities, at least from the outside looking in. 
he was obviously already that he was able to tell that I was already a mom um, of one. And like I said, he was a father of one. So I think that was something that kind of connected us that we were able to relate to um, and just be more understanding about. I also think our faith, um, I shared about my faith a lot on my platform. So I think he was able to see that we were of similar faiths. Um, and then maybe just other things that we had in common too, like I'm very family oriented, even outside of just like our family, but even extended family, we're both like very family oriented. So I think there was some things that caught his eye that we had um, in common. So he saw what you had in common and you get together and you start sharing more on social media. So for people who don't know you, why don't you give your give a little spiel about who you are and what you consider to be your mompreneurship? Yeah, so funny enough, I feel like where we're at now, this whole thing we built together really stems from him and I like meeting and dating and coming together and, um, you know, going on this journey together. Because like I said, when we first met, I didn't consider myself an influencer. I never even heard of the word. I didn't know it was a big industry and that you could make a career out of it. I was just like your average person, really just sharing updates on Instagram, who I thought was like friends, family, college friends, high school friends, um, and then a few random sprinkled in. But um, when we got engaged, we had an engagement shoot, of course, and we included the kids in one of the shots because that was a big part of like our story we were blending the family so I remember I posted that picture and it was the very first time I really shared more about my journey of going from a single mom to now I'm about to go on this journey of getting married and blended a family and that was the first time that I ever had like a post go viral <laughs> um, and I was just kind of taken back like wow like maybe more people really do need to hear this side of my story you know a lot of women related to it and so from that point on um, I just started to I started to be more intentional about sharing that side of my journey um, and that's truly what built this whole platform that we have now. So it's a very organic, like, um, way to start all of this. It wasn't intentional, but that's kind of what led us to where we are now. Okay. So talk to us about your hustle hierarchy is what I like to call it, because most of us have like five or six elements to our business because it's not a good idea in 2024 to have all your eggs in one basket right that one widget is not going to do do right by you what are right. the things in in order of like what makes the bulk of your income what makes the bulk of your business down to the other things that you do right so the bulk of our business is we both partner with brands um and that's where the bulk of it comes from. So we partner with like nationwide brands to promote their products or their services. We've now kind of built a whole team around it where we have a management agency so that our managers like help us negotiate. They help with contracting, with invoicing, they help with pitching. Um, so I would say that's where the bulk of it comes from. And then there's a lot of little like other smaller pockets where that we kind of control more like affiliate links, other platforms that we link on. Um, we're just now kind of getting into a space where we're looking into some products. We haven't really announced much of it. So you guys are hearing that first, but we're looking into the space of um, just venturing out as far as products, you know, blended family products, books, conferences, things like that, um, of that nature. And then if any of you guys have been following me for a while, y'all know one of the biggest things to my brand is the family matching. So we have some fun stuff coming up in that regard as well. Um, so those are all different little avenues that we're going into to kind of um, create multiple streams of income. But right now, I would say the bulk of it is partnering with the brands as well. I think of you all the time because I am a good Southern girl and yes. Lord, I love a good family matching opportunity yes. <laughs> and it's a very specific thing. And I laugh because I, a couple of companies attempt a few things. 
but it's always there's always something slightly off right mm -hmm. and i laugh because i you deal with it too you're like okay actually part of your business one of the first things that you you did right was you offered a service on your website where you would help people get the family matching outfits together. yes yes i did that for a little while so i would get so many questions because i'm the same like you through and through southern girl when my first born was a daughter i mean from the time she was born it was like the frilly outfits and the socks and the matching and the coordinating and that was back before it was like super popular like it is now you didn't have the department stores that you can go into and get mommy and me clothing so i had to like coordinate it and be more creative and so i would always get a lot of questions about how do you do this or where do you find this and so initially i was like hey maybe that's you know a little avenue i can go into and help people as well but then um eventually i was like okay i don't really have the capacity for this but that is something that i did early on um in the beginning was to try and help people find like those matching coordinated family looks as well but what you've done over the years have you seen where the holes are and what people are looking for and that what is interesting about your journey is there's not a lot of people who because everyone especially in modern society they're like oh single moms never gonna you know find love blah 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 mm -hmm. you really serve i mean many of my friends will call me and i'm just like let me send you this instagram <laughs> post but i have sent eight people who have ended up getting married like, oh, I love it. <laughs> you I know love you really that. do serve how did it, how did it truly come about because before you gave you said you were just hanging out you were just kind of posting like a quote unquote regular person you meet this man through your instagram what were you all doing before this became your full-time business yeah, so um, I was in marketing. That's actually my major from college. Um, and so I was in marketing and I was kind of all over the place. By the, when we got married, I had been in the industry for maybe six or seven years. So I did a little bit of everything all under the marketing umbrella, but the bulk of it was healthcare marketing. So I did that for a while. I worked for a local pediatric um, clinic here in Houston and drove referrals for that clinic. And then my husband, he was kind of all over the place as well. He was in, he did a little education. And then when he moved to Houston, he was actually a technician for AT&T, which was like totally out of his scope. And I was like, okay, this man really loves me for him to be climbing on these poles and in people's hot attics in Houston, Texas, just so that he can like relocate and obviously have some consistent income coming in. Um, when he relocated in Houston. And so that was, that's what he was doing before he went full time as well. At what point could you all both, did you realize how long did it take from him working as an AT&T installer and you bopping from in marketing, mostly in healthcare before you realized we have a business here. We can focus yeah. exclusively on this. Yeah. So it was about two years of juggling it both. Um, I would say like full on a couple years before that, you know, I would work with like mom and pop shops or like smaller businesses. I start to get those emails and then I had my first big break with my first national retailer. I was so excited. It was Sam's Club. Um, and then from there, things started kind of being more consistent. I started learning more about the industry um and then so i was doing it for about two years and working my nine to five and it got to a point where even brian was really encouraging me like courtney like this is actually turning into a thing for you 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 started first it was i started to match my nine to five income then it was i started to surpass it um, and i was still holding on to that little every two week check just because it was a comfort you know and he was even encouraging me, like, I really think you should just step out on faith and really pursue this full time. And it was becoming a lot to juggle, both of them being full time careers, the kids, the household. And I think me just being stretched thin was starting to like seep into every area in my life. And, it, and you could just tell that I was just on edge, stretched, stretched thin, but still didn't want to give it up. And then actually, I got laid off during COVID. 
Um, because like I said, I was doing healthcare marketing that required me to be like out in the field on the go all around Houston every day. So of course, when the whole world shut down, um, I couldn't do that anymore. And at first they were just kind of looking for stuff for me to do from home, but eventually it led to me being laid off. And I just took that as my sign, like it's go time. And literally ever since then, that was what, 2020 was COVID. Um, I've been doing it full time and haven't looked back since. And then I believe it was a year after that, a year or two after that is when Brian, he started to become more consistent with influencing and working with brands. And it's the craziest thing because I couldn't even get this man to take a selfie when we first got married. And now he's like a full on influencer. But um, then he stepped out on faith. Oh, he stepped on his face. He then he quit. Okay. Then he quit. Yes. And so what now year we was both this? do it full time. What year was this? I want. We're in 2024. I believe he did it two years ago. So like 2022, I believe. And what year did you? What What year were you later? 2020. A 2020. Mm-hmm. So this was pretty rapid. This yes. Was, and yes. all in all, y'all still having these kids. Yeah, <laughs> we're done now, but we were, we were still. That's what you, that's what you said before. <laughs> I know, I said that two babies ago, but for real, for real, this time we're done. <laughs> I, I had to, I had to stop you there because your man does these social media posts. Yeah. Do you have advice, not naming names, for people to want to, because how did he go from not taking a selfie no, I get that all the time. Women are like, how do you get your husband to like be so willing to do this? Because they're like, it's pulling teeth trying to get my husband to take pictures and to do videos. And I'm like, y'all, listen, if I get going back, I mean, it's like a 180. So there's hope, women. There's hope to get your men on board. And even still now, it's not his most favorite thing to do. But now, obviously, it's a family business. And so he shows up and he's a good sport and he smiles. But it really just took patience, honestly. And I think it took him just seeing that, okay, she's going somewhere with this. It's turning into something. I'm just being transparent. It took him seeing some of those deposits in the account. And he was like, okay, this is like a for real thing. Because at first he was like, Courtney, I'm seeing this amount of money that you spent at Old Navy on all these matching clothes. And you're not making any money from this. So like, what's up? Like, where is this going? And I had to tell him like, hey, like, I really feel like I'm going somewhere with this. Like, you know, just be patient. Just kind of ride it out with me. And gratefully, he did. Um, And it's turned into what it is now. But it really just took a lot of patience. I tried to be mindful of him and the kids. Because this started out because of me and my love for family matching and taking pictures and posting content. But I had to remind myself, you know, the kids didn't sign up for this initially. He didn't sign up for it. So I had to be mindful. You know, I didn't want to do it on a Sunday in the middle of a Saints football game, which he's like a crazy Saints fan or, you know, right after he got off work. Like I tried to do it to where it felt a little bit doable for him. And over time, now he's like a pro and he knows we have our full on shoot days. Like we got to change four or five times take these pictures or whatever but it took time and patience <laughs> but now does he have to work a job no so he does it full time yeah okay. he's actually he has his own like partnerships and deals and he has a manager and they have their own meetings and she pitches for him so he's like full blown into it now okay so this is where I want my audience to be able to pause and I want you, I want them to go get their partners. And now, Courtney, I want you to do a PSA to this, directly to the partner, why they should be open to being involved with these, with these posts, with these businesses, and with, their, with, your, with your goals and dreams. Because I think so much of what is important about this is he believed in you. He didn't want to necessarily participate yeah. at first, but he believed right. in you. So, what, so speak directly to the partner. When their wife or their girlfriend or their partner has our crazy ideas, 
yeah, <laughs> or I mean, how we can create financial stability for our family without having to work all the time. Right. Yeah. I think if Brian was here and he was talking directly to the men, he would pretty much say what you said, like, really, you know, if you believe in them, like go full in and support them. Even if it's something that you not, you don't want to do, you have to be a supportive partner to your spouse because it makes a world of difference. And this has really allowed us to like have freedom, not just financial freedom, but freedom with our time. You know, we're able to do things in the middle of the day. Um, Next week, we leave for like eight days for my oldest daughter's national dance competition, (laughs) where it's an out-of-state eight or nine day trip. And even just our jobs allow us to do things like that. Because most people, you can't take all nine days or that's all your vacation for the whole year just for a child's dance competition. So just the freedom that it allows us as a family, as far as our time. And of course, our finances has been life changing for us and for our kids. So if anyone has their spouse, go pull them, rewind this part of the podcast and let them hear that it is so worth it um, just to support your spouse and show up for them and go all in 100%. It's so worth it in the end. I love that and I love you. And I hope everyone <laughs> drags someone to listen to this because right. you know one of the things that I love about social media from a bird's eye perspective is seeing partnerships in different ways and seeing people talk about partnerships and express different ways of modern partnership. Did you have what I call the Tabitha Brown moment? Do you remember when Tabitha Brown retired her husband who took on a job in the same way your husband became an AT&T installer because he loved you so much? He was like, I'm traveling to a different state to be with this brilliant lady who I could see myself dying together with. (laughs) Oh man, Tabitha Brown, I remember the emotion behind when she retired him becoming a police officer. He became a police officer to support her dreams. Mm-hmm. And uh, she did that. Did you all have a moment where it was just kind of like, wow, like look what we're able to do together for each other. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny you brought her up. because I feel like we have a very similar story. Like I said, he, I remember when we got engaged, so actually he proposed to me like on faith because we were in two different states. He didn't have a job lined up at the time. He knew he wanted to move here because he was living in a smaller city in Louise or a smaller town, really. I wouldn't even call it a city. He was living in a smaller town in Louisiana. I'm in Houston, which is a huge city. So it was a no brainer that for us and our kids and our family that where I was as opposed to where he was at was the best decision. So anyway, he had been applying to jobs. Nothing was really coming through. We were already engaged. So we kind of felt like we were at a block in the road. Like, I mean, what are we going to do if you don't get a job for another six months, year, two months, whatever it is? Like, where do we go from here? And um, just to be transparent, that stage of our courtship was definitely, uh, you know, testing and had its discouraging moments. And so um, I remember a friend of mine whose mom worked for AT&T. She's like, hey, we're having this job fair. They're looking for techs. I know that's probably maybe not what he wants to do or the industry he's in, but they make good money. It's like one of those jobs where you have to work a bunch of overtime or work weekends and all that, but you still can make a decent living for yourself. Um, But anyway, she's like, even if it's just to get him down here. So I told him about that. He drove down here. I remember I would feel so bad for him because during that season where he was looking for jobs, he would have to come down here at like four in the morning and like go on interviews at like eight or nine in the morning and turn right back around and do a six hour drive to where he was at just to get a call and say that unfortunately, you know, they went a different direction or whatever. So once again, he drove down here for that process for AT&T. He got it. He had to go through this whole training where they were having to like learn how to climb like uh the poles that are like on the street for electricity and all of that. And it was definitely a sacrifice for him as well. And I definitely, when I remember the day that he put in his notice with AT&T, we were just like, wow, like we're really doing this. We've come such a long way from when we were first met. 
Um, I was in a one bedroom apartment with my daughter at the time. He was living with his dad at the time. He didn't even have a place of his own. And to have that moment of like, wow, I'm full time with this. You're going full time. At the time I was pregnant with Becca, who's my fourth. And we were in the middle of building this house. So it was definitely a step of faith for him to like leave his job in that moment. But we're like, hey, we're doing this. <laughs> and here we are. We, we're in the house. We've had Beckham and another baby since then. We're still full time. And so God has been good. All the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I think that's why I love this podcast. And I and I, I really appreciate Madam Noor for allowing me to have a podcast about moms who are entrepreneurs. Because my mom's an entrepreneur by default, by accident. But her mother was an entrepreneur because she had all these kids back in the early, in the 1940s. And she didn't have any parents. She was an orphan. And she wasn't able to go to the factory when the factories opened up to black women. So she couldn't earn any money. And she was very upset because she had all these kids, no one to keep them. And so she and her husband saved up. He worked at the factory making furniture. He saved up. And they built a little country store on a very important highway, a little, a little tiny country store that eventually yeah, grew and enabled her to be with her kids and make money. And eventually she was able to retire him. They were able to retire each other. Right. Wow. And so talk about from your perspective, do you think without being able to use your marketing expertise and your beautiful family, <laughs> do you think you would have the financial free? Was there any other path? to financial freedom, because I think it is important that we always consider having some sort of business on the side. We have always, that's been the way black people have prospered, quite frankly. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it was always a goal of mine. Like, I feel like there was this, like, just internal, like, drive that I've always wanted something more out of life. Um, I didn't want to do the normal, like, rat race. And I just feel like I was always very, like, creative. I feel like if you ask anyone that knew me, probably all the way back from, like, middle school, high school, and if they were like, could you see Courtney doing what she's doing now? They would say absolutely, because I feel like I just always had that in me, always very creative. Um, but yet, there was a time where I didn't know, like, what to turn that into or where I was going to go, but I knew that you know, that that was only a route for me with the freedom that I wanted. So if it wasn't for what I'm doing now, I feel like I would definitely be doing something under marketing. Funny enough, I always liked math growing up. That was my favorite subject. I was always really good at it. So initially, I thought I wanted to be an engineer. And then my mom signed me up for engineering camp at a university here in Texas. Um, when I was back in high school and I did that and I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> this is not for me. Um, and then so I was like, well, what else involves math? So then I was like, oh, maybe I'll do accounting. And so that was my major when I first started college. And then I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> and so that's how I fell back onto marketing because I was like, I just need that freedom to be creative. And I don't see myself being stuck behind someone's desk all day or in the office or just like crunching numbers all day. So I always knew that I needed like that creative space. And I feel like marketing gave me that, but never in a million years would I have thought that I would be running this type of business full time. I love it. And here we are. So this is what's yeah. great. So a lot of people are watching this. They're just like, sis tell me your secrets. What can I do? So if there's someone who's watching this, who feels that they would like to follow in your footsteps um, and that they want to take a leap of faith on themselves, what, what is your advice to them? Um, and how would you suggest they get started? Yeah. So I feel like these days there's so much more information out there to like help people in this industry to get started. I feel like when I started off, there was nothing. So it was literally like trial and error, especially for influencers of color. I feel like other influencers have been doing it for like years and years. It was just the industry we didn't know about and we hadn't tapped into yet. 
So it was a lot of just like trial and error when I first started off. I cringe thinking back to how I worked with brands, what I was charging, like all of that in the beginning of years because I just had no clue of what I was doing. I was trying to figure it out all by myself. But now I feel like there's so many resources out there. I would say just reach out to people. I have people that reach out to me all the time. And although now I'm like, a lot busier than I was in the beginning. I try to, whenever I have the opportunity to respond to those messages, those DMs, those emails, share advice, help the next sister out. So I would say reach out to people. Don't hesitate. Get a mentor. Um, there's so many like ebooks and courses and classes or just free resources too, like YouTube and things like that, um, that you can look up just to like get your foot in the door, but do as much research as you can and take advantage of all those resources that are out there now that I didn't have when I first started out for sure. And one of the things we're seeing is the whole social media kerfuffle. People are leaving Instagram, people are definitely leaving X. You know, what is threads? Where do you right. suggest people get started if they're looking to create content, in particular in the parenting and motherhood space? Yeah, so recently when people ask me they how they want to start, I have been pushing everyone to TikTok now. That was before the whole TikTok ban thing um, became a thing. I'm not sure which way that's going to go. But out of all the platforms, I have been pushing people to TikTok um, because it's just so much easier to like grow on that platform. And then also, I know it's like more old school, but a tried and true one that never has any issues is YouTube. Like YouTube is just one of those platforms that seems to be like very, very consistent for creators. So I would say people that are just now starting to try out, I would definitely explore those two platforms for sure. And what things do you think that they need? Because I laugh. <laughs> My mom has always been an advocate of, of business. And when we would talk about different businesses, she'd always be like, well, what do you think you need to start the business? And a running joke was, well, a car wash is a great business to start because all you need is a rag. Right. <laughs> what do you, and you know, is it true that all you need is a phone and a ring light? Like, what do you, what, or, or truly, if you want to like up your game and have beautiful visuals, like your, your visuals are always so crisp. You have like, excellent overlays. What tools? Like with phone, yeah. it's not a phone, a tripod, a ring light. What tools should people use? Right. Well, now I actually work with a videographer. So that's something I've outsourced. I tell people all the time, you do not have to start off like that in the beginning. You do not have to have a professional videographer editing all your content and all this professional um, equipment. Because honestly, as cliche as it sounds, really all you do need is your phone, um, especially in, in regards to like TikTok. I feel like TikTok is an app where it's just more everyday content, real life, quick moments that people are like capturing are the ones that go viral. So it's not as much pressure to be um, very curated or aesthetically pleasing like it is on Instagram. But if you are trying to up your game, honestly, I would say the latest version of an iPhone, um, there's ring lights you can get right off Amazon. We do have a professional quality camera that we use on our own too when we travel. Um, and that's a Sony camera as well. But it's really not a lot of upfront cost in this industry. Now, as the more you grow, as the busier you get, you want to start outsourcing things. Like I outsource makeup. I wish I could make my face look like this on my own, but I can't. So I have a full shoot day once I get off of this. But I outsource makeup. I outsource videography, photography. I outsource my editing. I outsource, like I said, I have a management agency. So they do all my invoicing, accounting, all of that. All of that is outsourced, but you do not have to start off like that at all. I would say just invest in a good quality camera phone, a nice ring light that you see right behind me that you can get off Amazon, um, just some editing apps on your phone that you can edit your videos, and you really can do it all yourself until you get to the point where you are don't have the capacity to. Now, what, now, what's interesting, I think, that a lot of people don't realize is you don't get someone in your house every day. That would be chaos. Uh, right. Talk about the importance of batching. 
Like, for example, yes. you just said, I got my face done for you, but not just you. I'm not paying right. for this, but just for you. I'm doing some yes. content. Yes. So I have recently, probably over the past, like, maybe two years, year and a half, I started batching content. Um, that actually stems from not only trying to put some structure around this career, because this could very easily feel like a seven day a week, 24 hours a day career that you can't check out from because you always have to be on and you always have to be posting and sharing and being consistent on your platform. And so you can definitely get burnt out. So it stems from not trying to be burnt out, but also putting some structure around it. Like I said previously for my husband and for my children, because I feel like they didn't sign up for this. I did, and I don't want them having a camera in their face seven days a week and having to take pictures and create content. Like, I want my kids to still feel like a normal kid who doesn't have to come home from school and take pictures. Um, and so batching kind of stemmed from that as well. And so now I have typically one to two days per month. Like, I think people will be shocked that the fact that I show up on social media anywhere from five to six days a week. I typically take Sundays off, but anywhere from five to six days a week, every single week, daily, I show up with new, fresh content. But yeah, I only shoot once or twice a month. And I've had to be really strategic about that. It takes a lot of like prep, planning out what I want to shoot, info, shopping for clothes, coordinating with my videographer, this is what I want. And even down to planning out my week in advance, like this is what I want to go live each day. And I feel like that's allowed me to like just put some structure around it um, and not having my family feeling like they have to shoot content seven days a week. So, cause it, it's no, that could be no fun for them too. And they could get burnt out with it as well. And so, yes, I batch twice once or twice a month where i'm shooting anywhere from eight to ten videos and we kind of have it down to a science i do that typically within like two to three hours so and that's with six kids changing four or five times i do have an assistant that comes and helps me on those days but yeah that's how we do it over here <laughs> 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 and my hat is off to you sister that is oh, very thank impressive you. uh okay our time is almost up but i have to ask you if you have any words of wisdom that you live by that you want to pass on to listeners who undoubtedly are very inspired by by your realism by your insight by your trust in yourself in your partner and in the path that is set out for you. Do you have any life mantras or words of wisdom that you'd like to share? I think for me, a big part of my journey has just always believing that I'm worthy. I know you mentioned it earlier, you touched on like single moms and that whole thing. Even during that stage, I felt like I always believed that I was worthy and that like something was going to come out of my life. I didn't know which direction it was going to go in, but that I was always deserving. And that's one of the things that I share over and over. I probably sound like a broken record with my platform, but we're all worthy of our dream lives, whatever that looks like. It, you know, it looks different for all of us, but um, no matter what path, twists and turns, mistakes you made, things you know, that may have happened in your life that you didn't see it going that way, you're still worthy of the dream life that you envision for yourself. So with hard work and with faith and just believing in yourself, um, you can definitely get there as long as you never lose that hope and that belief in yourself. So, yeah. I love this <laughs> and I love you. Okay. I, <laughs> you're this the best. You're like, this is why I send your content to my friends. I'm like, girl, it's all good. And Courtney. Courtney living her best life. Courtney right. got man doing social media videos. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, okay, I had to I had to ask you before we go. I have a, my favorite segment called Mompreneur Manifestation, where we ask you what's up next for you, what are you working on that you need some some help, some support, some good vibes, um, and how can we help to manifest success in this endeavor for you? 
Yeah, well, funny enough, I've been thinking about tapping into this whole industry, the whole like podcast um, industry as well. Just so I love moments like this where I feel like I can really just talk and share more about my journey. It's only so much you can share on Instagram. And it's very oh, I know. But I really just want that opportunity to be raw and real and have these conversations. I feel like it's so helpful. So kudos to you for this. Um, but yeah, I, I think I see something like this for myself in the future. So between this and our YouTube channel that we're trying to get back on and going, we kind of fell off from that for a little while. Um, but yeah, that's that's what the Williams have coming up next. I love it. Well, this is very exciting. Well, we'll talk offline because I also think yeah. that you definitely have a book in you. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, so we just yes. need to just have some chats. We will support your podcast. We will support your endeavors because you have given us so much and we are so grateful. Tell us before you leave where everyone can find you, what uh, the handles are, the locations, etc. Yeah, so I'm based in Houston, Texas, where Houston, Texas influencers. Um, my handles are pretty much the same across the board. So it's Court and Williams all together on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. I think Facebook is actually Courtney and Williams. But um, yeah, you can find me on Instagram, all the social platforms. Um, my blog is linked on my Instagram. So that would be a good segue to kind of find me on all the different spaces, Court and Williams. Amazing. Okay, you heard her, everyone. You got to follow her. She's full of so much wisdom and so much inspiration, as we can see. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. I've enjoyed the conversation. And thanks, everyone, for watching and listening to Mompreneurs. And a reminder, a brand new episode will go live each Monday on Urban One Podcast Network, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Visit UrbanOnePodcasts.com to learn more. That's Urban, the number one, podcasts.com. Mompreneurs is brought to you by the Urban One Podcast Network and Madam Noir. Created, produced, and hosted by me, Nancy Wren. Executive produced by Sarita Wesley, Allison McGovna, and Tanya Hoffler-Moore. Produced and edited by Jiminique Miller.